Today's Ask Reddit post. What is something normal that scares the shit out of you? Oh boy, this is gonna be a good one. Let's get started. Unexpected knocking on my door. I have nothing to hide. All my bills are paid but for some reason I get a mild panic attack when someone knocks. It actually evokes immediate anger in me. I have to calm my face before I open the door. Feels like such an intrusion on my day. Knock knock. Who has the ducking balls? WHO dares knock at this hour? Question mark? 1 p.m. As someone with toddlers. This is nap time. You dare knock between 1 and 4 and I will get so you mad. Let's each stand up and introduce ourselves and say one interesting thing about ourselves. I'm Bob and I try to kill one random person every week. Is today Tuesday? I volunteer as tribute. Sorry. We run the professional rules. No women. No kids. Besides. Since we know that death and taxes are the only two sure things in life. There is no reason to fulfill either obligation early. Give yourself time to work with what you earned until the very last moment allowed. This is an oddly comforting sentiment. Putting my hand into the garbage disposal to clear it. No one else allowed in the kitchen because I know they'll somehow turn it on. My wife broke a glass in the sink once and it went in the garbage disposal. Clearing broken glass I couldn't see was the stupidest thing I've ever done. LOL I'm fine with that as long as nobody is anywhere near the switch. But my fiance is terrified of it too so he'll ask me to do it every time. I had to hire a handyman to install our dishwasher a few months ago. This older guy comes. Reminded me a ton of my dad. So he hooks up the hoses and tells me he needs to pop a little plastic cap out of our disposal to hooks the debris line to it. But he can't stick his hand in to get the cap out because he's terrified of sticking his hand in. So I tell him I'm cool with it. So he pops it from the outside and tells me to go for it while he feels around the hole to make sure it came out. Our hands brushed and he screamed so loud and high that even I jumped a good foot up in the air. We both just started dying of laughter and had to take a break for a while for his heartbeat to drop back to normal. Edit. Both our garbage disposal and dishwasher are wired into the electric so there is no plugging unplugging them. My fiance wasn't willing to mess with wiring the new dishwasher in as it was cloth wiring. Hence hiring a handman. Our house is 150 years old and has been wired 3 times. So each room has about 4 or 5 breakers, which also connect to other rooms and turn off random outlets. The handyman had to flip quit a few to find and turn off the dishwasher wire so I guess he just didn't want to find the garbage disposal wires. And logically he probably knew neither of us would flip the switch with our hands in it but it was just a scare to have something move in the disposal while his fingers were in it. If I wasn't working on a waste disposal right now then this would be hilarious. While browsing Reddit. Don't know if this counts as normal but mental illnesses. The fact that your own brain can turn on you and create a reality different from the rest of us scares the shit out of me. Growing up in a very neurotic family, my biggest fear was that I was like them and lacked the ability to see myself and the world clearly. It was sort of like my mum is in complete denial that she has severe BPD and PTSD. Her memories change depending on what she wants to remember. What if I'm the same and just don't know it? I basically gaslit myself. My mother has BPD amongst other things and she always changed stories or told new lies during stories and I just thought she was doing it on purpose. Never thought it would have been part of her mental illness. Ro. I have BPD but something people often forget is that we're responsible for our own actions. BPD is manageable with therapy. I may have very strong emotions but if I hurt anyone I am still responsible for that. Just because someone is mentally ill doesn't mean they can't help their actions. You are the first person I've heard say, I have BPD. Thank you for saying it's manageable with therapy. My mum believes it's not her problem and that the rest of the family have conspired against her. It heartbreaking. Be kind to you and I wish you all the help in the world for being responsible with your actions toward yourself and others. Aging. The thought of getting to a point where I won't be able to take care of myself anymore scares the living daylights out of me. I'm much less scared of dying than I am of outliving my ability to do anything. People think I am crazy when I tell them I don't want to live past 75. 
See the problem I have with this idea is that by the time I'm 75 who knows what the world will look like. My grandma is 86 now. And she's 100% the person to have agreed with you when she was young. No way she'd want to have missed the last decade though. She loves her great grandchild in and she's also still mobile enough to do the things she's always liked doing. I agree with the sentiment but who knows what science will have thought of by the 2060s. There's this concept called the hedonic treadmill that basically observed as the tendency for humans to quickly return to a relatively stable level of happiness after major positive or negative life events. So let's say you lose your left arm in a car accident, or you win the lottery and get one dollar million. After a year or two you'd probably be just as happy as you were prior to the event. And aging is even more gradual than that. Humans are just insanely adaptive. Being adaptive helps tremendously with aging too. Keep your mind sharp and your body active. Challenge yourself with logic and word games. Do creative activities that open you to doing things in different ways. Take care of your back and keep your muscles moving. Mirrors in a dark room. Like if you turn the light off in the bathroom before leaving or something. Feel like that's where the veil is thinnest there for some reason. Fun fact, if you were to ever see something in the mirror, it's because your brain is trying to fill in what's there based on a low stimulus, I think. It's called pareidolia and is why we see faces in objects, and flowers or animals in clouds. I have a mirror in my bedroom and every night when I stay up late I see something in it but when I look directly at it it disappears kinda creepy lol but I try to ignore it. Yeah this is pareidolia I believe. Your brain can't see exactly what's there out of the corner of your eye. So it makes something up. Damn thanks a duck and lot for the nightmares. Asshole brain filling in the gaps. This is gonna sound weird but seeing things in the middle of the road at night. I was once driving home one night and turned a corner to see a dog in the middle of the road. Nothing weird right? Completely normal sight in a suburb. Every instinct in my body was telling me to get the duck out of there now. When I see stuff in the middle of the road at night it doesn't matter what it is I get chills. Goosebumps. My ears stand on end and my palms sweat. It's happened with deer, dogs, people, raccoons, and even a trash can once. Can't explain it but it terrifies me. Oh my god I get this too. I think it has something to do with the fact that it's not supposed to be there and when we see things we aren't supposed to our brains respond. Edit. Also because it seems like it's on a stage with a spotlight and something has to happen. The feeling that's not supposed to be there is what gets me I think. It might just be ingrained too because it doesn't happen in the daytime. If something is in my way in the day I just acknowledge it and act accordingly but that same scenario at night makes warning bells go off space. Just looking up and coming to terms with how big it is and how little we know about it. Don't think of it as looking up. Think of it as looking down into an infinite void. A true bottomless pit. That helps. Not, now I'm staring into this bottomless void all the time. Thanks. Peer into the void and the void peers into you. When cockroaches starts to fly, the problem is not when they appear, it's when they disappear. Muffled buzzing behind the drawer. You know it's there, but can you catch it in time? Will it fly straight at your face if you move the drawer? Will it rush under the bed? Grasshoppers. They just are too unpredictable and it terrifies me. Frogs kind of too for the same reason, but not as bad. I feel this way about butterflies. They're pretty and harmless but something about the way they fly makes me yeet myself away when they are near me. You're the first person I've seen to share this fear. They're creepy little duckers when they get too close. OMG me too. I am ducking scared of flying insects. I don't have a lot of fears but flying insects drive me crazy. They have been stuck in my ear, nose, fly into my mouth, countless times against my face. Been biting by quite a few. The worst are libels because of their size. Edit. Dragonflies are called libels in Dutch language. Getting an insect stuck in my ear is one of my biggest fears. The amount of times my grown ass has stuck my head inside my shirt in public due to an insect buzzing a bit too close to my ears is embarrassing. I'm not a fan. Closing my eyes when shampooing. I've seen too many horror movies to enjoy darkness. It's an endless cycle. 
You close your eyes and lather your face as quick as possible but you go too fast and open your eyes and now your eyes burn. So you close your eyes and go back under the water stream and you do it all again. And every time you come out of the water and open your eyes briefly, the clown is a little bit closer. Thanks. I hate it. The ocean. I'm talking like out in the ocean. Hundreds of miles from land. Treading water. Alone. Also. Spiders. You would hate my sleep paralysis spiders. I'll just input my related spider fear. When they just appear on the curtains after looking at them not too long ago. Meaning they were in the folds. Had that shit happen few months ago when I was getting cozy in bed. Still afraid of that happening again. Edit. Thanks for fueling my arachnophobia even more now guys. Kinda weird but when audio starts skipping when I am playing my music. It scares me shitless. Totally agree. Instant anxiety kickstart for sure. Big something's wrong energy. Public speaking. My friends didn't really understand what a fear of public speaking meant till I showed them on my Fitbit how my heart was racing to about 150 BPM because I had to give a speech for an election that I was running unopposed in. Like this shit is real. Did you win? It was an emotional defeat but I ended up with the position. Can you run for president please? The sound of someone riding a skateboard on the sidewalk behind me. I don't know why, but I freeze. Edit. Yes. I am also unnerved by shopping carts behind me in the supermarket. I always pull over and let them pass if they are following too close to my heels. Apparently I was Achilles in a past life. I would like to add trucks. When I am walking on a sidewalk and hear a truck coming up behind me I die a little on the inside. TBH I think we'd all be scared if we heard a truck directly behind us on a sidewalk since they shouldn't be there. What if it's a truck riding a skateboard? Then it's totally radical. Phone calls. Especially if it's not a number from my contact list. If it's important they can leave a message. Which I will then call voicemail and mash 7 until it says end of messages. I'm doing it right now. Learning to drive, especially because I'm taking lessons, and after my lesson tomorrow, I'm gonna be on the highway and my lessons have a tendency to be really close together. Edit. Thank you all so much for your kind advice. It's really helped calm my nerves. Once you've been driving for a few years it becomes a mundane, second nature kind of thing. Then friends and family start dying in car accidents, and you start to realize how dangerous it really is. I'd say that the big thing is to just not get too nonchalant. Always be aware of your surroundings and focus on the road. No matter how comfortable you are with driving. That's a scary idea to me. That many people can almost zone out while being responsible for a ton of moving metal. Lmeo. Most of the time driving home from work I just zone out and end up back at my house. When driving is like a second nature for you it doesn't even matter. It's not so much zoning out. There's an actual term for it and it's called flow. When you've done something so much, your brain can pretty much put it on autopilot. It's what people mean when they say workflow. Or when athletes get in a zone and can't describe how they do certain things. The future. And people asking me how I feel about something because usually I have no clue how I feel about something so I end up lying and just agreeing with them. It makes me feel so fake because everything I like and dislike generally based off of other people's opinion because I seriously just have zero clue how I actually feel about things. But the only things I am certain that I do and don't like are things like food and music. Everything else even things like my hobbies I generally can't figure out if I actually like doing it or if it's because I grew up around people whose hobbies were the same as my hobbies I only just realized this too. This is pretty normal and common as a young person but the only fix for this is not being ashamed of not having an opinion about something. Just because they've thought about it and then put you on the spot doesn't mean you should be ashamed of saying I don't know. Plus we learn by watching others. It's called observational learning so being interested in something because you saw someone else do it doesn't make it any less yours so to speak. Feeling warm. I had a vacation to China when I was a child, and ever since I woke up in the hospital there, I've been very, and I mean very, sensitive to heat. 
It could be 20 degrees Fahrenheit outside and I'd feel warm. The worst part is, usually when I get too hot, I have a wicked seizure and wake up on the floor with scraped knees or a bruise on my forehead. I dunno. Feeling warm terrifies me now because I just know I'm more likely to pass out. 20 degrees. God I hope you're talking celsius or you've been living a miserable life. Edit. I have been informed that OP in fact meant Fahrenheit. Poor soul. Nah Kelvin. Who's Kelvin? That guy. The thought of getting pregnant. I can't even count the number of nightmares I've had about this. The worst are the ones where I wake up and am 8 plus months pregnant and am about to be forced to give birth. Terrifying. Ugh. Same. I had a dream once where I ended up pregnant and my real life logic slipped into the dream and I was like, I'm in a long distance relationship. How did this happen? And then later in the dream, I was holding the baby and just threw it across the room. XD. Yetus that fetus. Fetus deletus. Watching everyone you love get old. Yes, I hate knowing that people like my parents will eventually pass away. Like it's far from impossible that you die first. Is that a challenge? Nice try Pennywise. My husband knows how much Pennywise terrifies me. He taught our 4 years old to growl and say hiya Georgie. Every morning my son says hiya Georgie mom lol. Oh that's too adorable for words. Until his face splits open and a clown slides out of the skin. That Lego dragon statue in the water outside the Lego store in Orlando, Florida. I recently found out that other people find it scary after discovering the Submetionophobia subreddit. I have the same opposite feeling about Submetionophobia I find it more fascinating than scary. I find the two often overlap for me, this for sure. I'll often find myself scrolling through Submetionophobia, Thalassophobia, Megalophobia, all the phobias, images because I enjoy the nervous high they give me. Overflowing toilets, edit, whoa, and the upvote floweth over, first comment over 1k, thanks so much, glad there's more than just me out there, smiling face with squinting eyes, thumbs up, nightmares for literally years about it, oddly. In retrospect some 10 years ago, I realized it was a subconscious link to something else in life that was manifested as overflowing otherwise questionable toilets. Thanks to a discussion with someone about how they interpret dreams for others. If you don't mind me asking, what was it, about what the dreams were, what they correlated to, or both, I was wondering what it correlated to. Dream interpretation is mad interesting. Confrontation. From knocking on a door to eye contact. I absolutely loathe this. An amused face. Freaking walking in the dark. You expect me to just walk comfortably when I hear a small noise in the bushes and I can barely see. I tell myself not to be ashamed of being scared of the dark because it's a survival instinct. Meaning we can't ducking see which means it's not safe for us. Which means I'm not a baby for being afraid of it lol. Eyes contact. I don't know why but when someone looks directly in my eyes, I will feel very uncomfortable and nervous. My hands will begin to sweat a lot and my throat will feel like burning. My friends say that maybe it is because I am lying or have done something wrong but it's not. When I talk to other people such as my teacher, friends, relatives, parents etc. I often look at another spot in their face like ears, noses, mouth or else. Certainly not eyes. The same goes with when I practice public speaking or being awarded on the stage. I usually look at the ceiling or the clock or an empty space between audiences rather than their eyes. I think it may be because I am scared of being judged or being noticed too much. And I am trying to fix it so hard. A tip I've heard to avoid becoming anxious self-conscious in our own head is just to pay attention to what the other people are doing even more. Usually we just overdo it in our own minds to an irrational level. The planets. Seeing real photos and videos of them from space just creeps me tf out. Because they're so gigantic. Big things scare me sometimes. Depending on what they are OFC. And the planets are the biggest things around lol. I would piss myself seeing them in person. Edit. 
Yes I know I'm standing on a planet and I know I can see the moon. I'm talking about photos or videos of planets taken from outer space lol. They look intimidating asf. Bro, you actually watched the whole video, I'd give you a high five if I was a human. Make sure to click the like button and subscribe for more great content. See you next time.